Fire Emblem Awakening on Lunatic Plus is a game where the enemies like to kill me, which makes me angry, so I want to kill them, but I can't do it because I don't do enough damage. So I now mod the game to imbue everyone with my rage, increasing crit rates to 100%, consequently allowing me to kill them. But they can really, really kill me now. But as long as I kill them before they kill me, it shouldn't be a problem, right? Easy. Well, no, because this guy had Vantage Plus, so I literally had no hope of ever defeating them. As you can see, this mod can make the game both way easier and way harder. So I'm going to attempt to beat this modified version of the game as I tell you the story of Robin, a completely unchanged normal female Robin. I picked female Robin over male Robin because the male exclusive classes have pretty bad skills for this run, like Wrath, Zeal, and Gamble that literally just don't do anything. For my asset and floor, I went with plus magic to secure as many one shots as possible, and minus luck because luck doesn't really do anything. I'd recommend that you, the viewer, pick an asset in subscribe or like because it's awesome. On the first map against Valadar, I paired up Robin with Prom and just killed Valadar in one hit. On the next map, I pair up Robin and secure a kill on the Myrmidon to the right, but because I wasn't paying attention to skills, Prom ended up dying to the other Myrmidon with Luna Plus. On attempt 2, I attacked with Robin again, like last time, but unlike last time, I decided to let Frederick take the sword user who didn't have Luna this time. Unfortunately, on the next turn, I realized this time the map was unwinnable, as the mage near the boss had Luna Plus and Vantage plus so they would always attack first and one shot everyone on my team so i just suicided with prom to reset the map again and again and again as i had to check the major skills with each reset as i now knew that if one of them had vantage plus it would be impossible to win when i got the lucky attempt i just did the same as i did before kill one of the myrmidons with robin and killed the other myrmidon with frederick with a bronze sword robin killed the mage and Crom could dispatch the barbarian then after taking out the other barbarian we could fight the next form of units. Fortunately, only two of them had Luna, and by positioning carefully, Frederick could take down three of them. Then on player phase, the remaining two were easy pickings, allowing me to move up towards the boss, who had vantage and one to two range. So I had to fight them with Frederick, and with a bronze sword, he had a 100% chance to survive and kill, ending the map. For chapter one, I simply paired up Lizza and Robin and killed this fighter here. This placed Robin in range to be killed by the nearby mercenary, so Frederick moved in to stop them from approaching. Doing this dropped him to 1 HP, so I needed some help, which came in the form of reinforcements with Sully and Virion, who now paired up to land a one shot, and Robin did the same to the nearby fighter. After enemy phase ended, my team just had to kill the three enemies to the north, and that was pretty easy, leaving just the boss who had Vantage Plus. Frederick was my only unit that could survive an attack from the boss, so I had to retreat and slowly heal him up with Lizza. Once he was healed, he secured the one shot, and we moved on to chapter two. At the start, I immediately sent in Frederick to take down the barbarian. Then shortly after, Robin blasted the mercenary with thunder. After securing a kill on enemy phase, Frederick moved up and to the left, and separated with Virion. Everyone else just ran south and to the left. During the enemy's turn, the big squad of units split up with three-headed north and a three-headed south. This made it pretty easy to kill three of them at once, then the other squad approached and we killed the other three. Meaning now I had to figure out a way to safely engage the enemies in the north. And while I was doing that, I looked at the boss, and with Luna Plus and Vantage, I've probably already lost. I still decided to test what was the best way to fight the next formation of units, and they're pretty hard to fight since you have to be in range of at least two enemies at once for them to move. Since the mercenary had Luna Plus, there wasn't really a safe place for me to place Frederick, so I just placed him on a fort and prayed for some lucky dodges. That I didn't get and Frederick died, so I reset. Fortunately, my plan for the first formation of enemies was pretty consistent, and I swiftly got back to where I died. Since my previous plan didn't work, I came up with a much better one, as I remembered that Robin can walk on the water. So I moved Robin up near this guy, and attack them to kill them. This caused the entire squad to move, that I took advantage of by placing Frederick in range to kill a mercenary on enemy phase. After taking out another foe on enemy phase, I had no choice but to retreat, and to split up the enemies, I had to split up my own team. That was a big mistake, as Stahl, Virion, and Krom were now at risk of dying. They all couldn't retreat, one of them had to die, but since I valued Stahl and Virion's power bonuses since they both gave defense, I just
just reset the map. After executing the same plan, I was back to where I lost before. And by being a little smarter this time, no one got trapped, and I slowly picked off the enemies one by one. Until just the boss remained. They were easily the most annoying unit on the map, since they had Luna Plus and Vantage Plus again. So not even Frederick could take the attack if they crit. Fortunately, by baiting the boss around, I managed to place them next to a forest tile. And with its avoid boost, they only had a 17% chance to hit Frederick. So when I attacked, they missed and Frederick killed them, ending the map. On chapter 3, I just quickly recruited Cullum with Brom, paired up and moved them out of enemy range. Then Frederick baited in the enemies to the right so my whole team could collapse on them on the next turn. Even with the enemy's new skills with Tavis Plus, Aegis Plus and the formidable counter, they didn't prove to be too difficult. I just had to be a little more careful. After finishing off the final few enemies in the south, I could open the door, kill a knight and use Frederick to lure in more enemies. I baited them all to the big open area in the south and attacked and easily killed them. I could even keep this guy alive to feed some EXP to Robin on the next turn. Uh, so this guy has pass, so he killed Muriel. Anyway, after killing the mercenary and the knight, it was a clear path to the boss that Robin just one shot with a dying blaze. With that map done, I could now buy defense tonics and strength tonics and I spent a good chunk of my gold just buying a bunch of them. The defense tonics were the most important, and I pretty much used one to help on every map from this point onward. And with that done, I ran to Paralog 1. For this map, I swiftly killed three enemies in the north with Robin, Sumia, and Veik. And by placing Frederick in the forest here, I secured an extra kill on enemy phase. With two more kills on player phase, then a kill on enemy phase, and another one on the next player phase. I dispatched the initially aggressive enemies, and had to move on to the next enemy formation who had similar AI to the guys from chapter 2. So right now, they didn't attack Frederick, so I had to wait for Robin to catch up to take out the thief, causing more enemies to rush in, allowing Frederick to secure an extra kill on enemy fees. By utilizing a vague pair up, Virion, Donald, and Krom cleared our path forward, allowing us to take out the thief and obtain a killer lance, a slightly better steel lance. Anyway, Frederick and Donald now paired up to trap the archer in the north, and Donald just attacked them until he gained a level, allowing me to recruit him at the end of the map. The map was pretty easy now, I could solve most of my problems with either just luring the enemies in with Frederick and then killing them, or for enemies with Luna, I could outrange them and kill them on player phase. As for the boss, they had a silver axe equipped, so I just obliterated them with my ranged units. With a useless unit added to our ranks, I ran over to Castle Ferox to begin Chapter 4. This map's pretty much just a race. You have to kill the enemies as fast as possible, so you don't get overwhelmed as more and more enemies move in. On my first try, I rushed to the right, but after securing two kills, I ended up dying to a mage. So on attempt 2, I ran to the left, killed a fighter, and this time I paired up Sumia and Vague to one-shot this mage from a distance that I couldn't do before because the other mage had Tavis. This didn't lure in the short axe fighter above, giving me the space to secure 3 kills on player phase. Survive enemy phase, then kill one more fighter on the next turn, and another on the turn after. Unfortunately, this attempt ends in a loss, because Vague missed his attack here. So I did it all again, and used Chrome next time for a more reliable option. With a consistent kill on Marth with Frederick, into a swing of Robin's bronze sword to destroy the fighter, I cleared the chapter. On chapter 5, I perfectly planned out my first turn, by sending Sumia over to one-shot the mage, Star and Long Ku in to one shot a barbarian, then Krom and Vague to kill the other barbarian, and by transferring over Vague, Robin just barely secured this kill against the Myrmidon with Pavis. After Frederick dispatched two enemies on enemy phase, I killed two of the approaching mages, blocked the lower fort to stop some reinforcements, and sent Robin to the right to assist on the following turn, where I had to kill four units in a single turn. One with Robin, another with Frederick, the third with Rickon, and the final one by transferring over Kellum. On the next enemy phase, some Wyverns came in. On this turn, they weren't threatening, but one turn after, they were a serious problem. Especially considering the enemy group had a mix of both Pavis and Aegis. There was also another Wyvern seven spaces behind them. And what's more, Frederick and Robin were on the other side of the map. I had to carefully plan out this turn if I wanted everyone to survive. First, I paired up Robin with Maribel to give her just enough movement 
move to take out a wyvern. The problem that came now is I couldn't kill this wyvern at a distance since they had Aegis, and I couldn't attack them at one range as the wyvern behind them covered them, and would one-shot someone weak like Brom. But they wouldn't one-shot Frederick, so I had to transfer Frederick into a transfer pair-up to place him in range to attack them. Securing the kill, and with Rickon and Krom, I killed the final Myrmidon. The two enemies that remained after enemy phase were swiftly dispatched, and since no more reinforcements would spawn, the rest of the map should have been easy. Until I baited in the Wyverns and realized that the boss had the dreaded 1-2 range Luna Plus Vantage Plus combo, and they were positioned extremely awkwardly, as on this turn, I had to kill the Wyvern to the right, but in doing so, that would cause the boss to attack that unit and kill them. So, Robin was dead. I tried to save her by placing Longku also in range of the boss, but that didn't help. So they attacked Robin, and she dodged. I yelled out in success. But then Robin just misses, and I realize that I just lose now, unless I get another lucky dodge. So I maximized Robin's avoid and attacked. Somehow got the dodge, and easily cleared up the final three remaining enemies, ending a pretty stressful map. Paralog 2 looked a little too hard to do right now, so my only option was to head over to Chapter 6. A really challenging map, as there's way too many enemies that all pretty much just run at you at once. You're basically forced to fight multiple enemies on enemy phase, and if one unlucky one just happens to have Luna Plus, you just instantly lose. You also have to be careful around the mages, since at this point in the game, none of my units have the res to take a crit from them. So I not only had to carefully navigate through this map, but I also had to get lucky with Lunatic Plus skills. So it should come as no surprise that my first attempt went terribly. I got two kills on enemy phase, and six more on the next player phase. The problem here is I pretty much had to to suicide everyone to do this. There were far too many enemies coming in, so I couldn't spread my team thin. They needed to group as close together as possible near the center of the map. So next time on turn one, I was a little luckier in terms of the enemies near Robin, so she could fight two enemies in one turn since none of them had Luna Plus. Unfortunately, this was compensated by the fighter close to Frederick having Luna this time, and the only way to not die was to dodge. So I switched to a sword for better avoid and dodged. Now Robin killed the nearby fighter and was healed. Frederick and Longku transferred and paired up to move down a little, then Pan moved down in range for Vake to pair up with her. So Krom could transfer him over for the strength boost to kill this guy, then Sumia could come in, transfer over Vake again, and then kill this mage. Then Frederick could block the choke point and kill the other mage. With some good luck with Lunatic Plus skills, Frederick could survive here, and this play was by far my best opening move. But unfortunately, this attempt ends up losing, as I made a very powerful Passive play on turn 3 by retreating most of my team near Marth, causing Gaius to die to Marth and then Marth to dodge the mage. Gaius dying wasn't a problem. The problem here was the Luna Cav all the way in the back. I couldn't kill them, and they would kill anyone who tried to attack the foes guarding them. So this was a reset. After getting some good RNG again, I pieced together a better play for turn 3. Of using Rickon to kill this Cav over the wall, then Krom could recruit Gaius and pair up to kill this mage. Then Longku and Pan could pair up to maximize a void, and they could kill the mage. Now on enemy phase, they just had to dodge the Cav with Luna Plus. And with his attack dodged, there was only 6 enemies remaining a cav that attacked Marth that Robin now dispatched, a mage to the right that Sumia killed, a fighter to the right that Robin killed, then a mage with vantage that Robin had to kill, another fighter that Frederick disposed of, leaving just Valadar remaining, the boss that had no noteworthy skills, and was one shot by Frederick ending the map. For chapter 7, it was another map where I needed to play it fast, as ambush wyvern reinforcements appear around where you start on turn 5, as they would pretty much kill anyone in their attack range, so I aggressively pushed up with both Frederick and Robin. After securing some kills on enemy phase, I had to be careful with the Silver Bow Luna Archer. So I didn't approach them, I just killed the Wyvern and Barbarian and waited as they now approached. But a thief with both Counter and Aegis approached alongside them. Robin dealt 20 damage to them just one off a kill. So I had to trade Elwind from Rickon over to Robin for one extra might. Then I just had to rescue him out of harm's way. Now Robin could kill the Lunar Archer in the forest, and then killed some enemies that attacked her on enemy phase. After four attacks on player phase, I secured a path to the center of the map, and the reinforcements were no longer an immediate problem. Anyway, now I really just moved Robin up to fight more Wyverns, then the reinforcements came in. I had to end the map on this turn. Fortunately, I had more than enough firepower 
power to do so, with Frederick, Robin, Virion, Rickon, and finally Crom. Next up was Chapter 8, a much easier map than the previous two, but I still ended up dying on my first try to a Vantage Mage. So on attempt 2, I used a Res Tonic to hopefully avoid a death by a similar means. I began turn 1 by going out of my way to kill as many mages as possible, since they were both the most powerful and mobile enemies. Additionally, I used Sumia to throw Robin down to take out the Cav, throwing forward a path for Noe to move out of range of danger. On turn 2, everyone just moved up to the north and waited for the Lunar Mage to approach, who I then attacked with Robin, and did the classic play of just clicking end turn and hoping Robin can take every unit that attacks her, resulting in a riskless enemy phase where there was absolutely no chance she would die. After killing the three nearby enemies, I could visit a village, while I steadily approached another village that was guarded by just two units. So security was pretty tight, but I managed to sneak my way in there. As for the rest of the map, you can pretty much just take it at your own pace, which is usually an indicator that it's really easy. I killed the Myrmidons with ease and none of the mages had vantage, so nothing could stop me from abusing their mediocre defense to just one-shot them. There were no special skills on the boss, making them prone to simply being one-shot. Since Robin is now level 20 and we pick up a second seal and master seal, I now had to make a decision for a short-term power boost by just promoting her, or a more long-term power boost by reclassing her to Myrmidon for the skill vantage at level 10, allowing me to avoid enemy attacks entirely as long as Robin one shot them with a crit, which seemed so immensely powerful that I had to pick the skill up. Unfortunately, this reclass made the next map much harder, and it was already a pretty tough one, since enemy reinforcements appear around where you start on turn 5, and also on that same turn, every enemy becomes aggressive and chases after you, so it's easy to get pincered between reinforcements and the units near the bottom right. The easiest way to not die is to just kill the enemies as fast as possible, and my plan for the very first attempt reflected this, as on turn 1 I paired up Noe and Cordelia to kill the mage, who was the most threatening initial enemy since they weren't slowed down by the desert. After rescuing her out, I played it a little passive, and used Robin to lure in some enemies to the right, and used Frederick to dispatch the soldiers to the left. Once the enemy phase was over, there was a wyvern and soldier right in range to be safely killed at a distance, and after another enemy phase passed, Libra died, who I don't think is possible to save, then my team advanced south, dispatching two enemies right now, then a mage shortly after. Here is where I realized I played this far too slow, as the wyverns would show up on this turn, and there were two enemies in the south, protected by the mage behind them. My only play was to just end turn, the wyverns appeared, and everyone advanced. I was surrounded, and I had to reset. The big mistake that I made on that attempt was on turn two, I played too passive. I should have moved up and killed all three enemies on that turn, so on my next try I used Rescue with Lizard to have enough move to do this. After using Noe to one-shot this Dark Mage, I had to be careful. I had to perfectly engage the bottom right enemy squad if I wanted to win, and fortunately I had good luck in regards to enemy skills, since the important ones didn't have Luna. So I killed the Archer with Robin, rescued up Frederick, and killed the Mage. He shrugged off the incoming attacks, then Robin and Frederick secured two more kills and were then rescued away. Noe finished off the weakened wyvern and on enemy phase she was pretty likely to die here, but she didn't, making the next turn pretty easy. I just recruited Farcher and killed like everyone nearby and ended my turn with Robin in range of the four wyverns. If she got hit by both of the silver axe wyverns, she died here. Fortunately, she didn't, and the short axe wyverns were pretty pathetic, so after dispatching the wyverns with Rickon, Noe, Frederick, and Farcher, I could move up to fight the boss, who fortunately could couldn't one-shot Robin or Frederick, so I just alternated healing one and fighting with the other, until someone dropped dead. I now attempted a skirmish battle. Why did I do this? I don't know. I recorded this like a month ago, and if I had to take a guess, I probably did it to pick up some gold. The encounter was pretty easy, I just paired up to maximize move, got 4 kills on turn 1, 1 kill on turn 2 enemy phase, 4 more on turn 3, and the final kill on turn 4. Surprise! Looks like we're returning to chapter 10. Robin's fighting some wyverns, but then we're sort of screwed, I can't really go anywhere, the wyverns have too much move, and Frederick 
is now dead. You see, the problem I made there is that I simply played it too fast. As well, there are some thieves that run away with some valuable items. If I needed gold, I could probably just fight a skirmish. So on my next attempt, I played it a little slower. So for turn one, Farja and Noe secured two kills, and Robin moved up to take out a third, placing her in range of some wyverns. And Frederick moved left to place him in range to get some kills on enemy thieves. Along with Robin, who funnily enough, literally couldn't be hit. Turn two is pretty much where I gave up on catching up to any of the thieves for some extra loot, so everyone just focused on keeping the starting area safe by dispatching wyverns. After surviving enemy phase, this next turn was just set up for my northern squad, as they got into position to engage some more enemies on the next turn, and block some forts where reinforcements would appear on turn 6 and 7. After that turn ended, we were in a pretty comfortable position. Robin's squad just advanced, easily killing any foes in their way until they reached the fort, where they were staring down three enemies. So Robin killed the soldier from the fort to stop the reinforcements that appeared that turn, and the two axe users literally couldn't hit her. In the south, Frederick and Noe easily dealt with the two wyvern reinforcements from the western forts, and after turn 7 passed, no more reinforcements would appear, allowing Robin to move off the fort and decimate everyone on the way to the boss, learning vantage in the process. Since the boss couldn't hit Robin, they were pretty easy too, so after feeding the kill to Noe, the map was over. With Robin at level 10, I now wanted to reclass her to Dark Mage. Unfortunately, there was an Anna who sold a second seal on Paralog 1, so I purchased it, and was looking to do some more purchases, specifically some more defense tonics, and a Rism was stopping me from doing that, so I had to teach them a lesson. It fortunately was pretty easy, Robin got a few kills before I reclassed her to Dark Mage. Frederick killed the Swordmaster, and with Advantage active, Robin cleanly disposed of the final three remaining units in the south. I now checked Crumb's supports before doing chapter 11 and found out that he will marry Sumia since he has a B-rank support of her, and I wanted him to marry Robin so I could give Lucina advantage to have another 1-2 to two range advantage sweeper, meaning it was time to do some paralogs. So I just cleared paralog 2 and just now realized I wasn't recording it. So I did it again and this time I just soloed it with Robin. Once she was in vantage range, nothing could touch her. I only had to be careful around the enemies with Aegis, but she could sometimes also one-shot them, so uh, it was pretty easy. Paralogue 3 was pretty much the same deal, except I did deploy like everyone, and Noe was actually doing pretty good as I sent her over towards the right, and with her around 30 defense, she destroyed everything in her path, and so did Robin with Vantage to the left side. Okay, so yeah, it's easy, and uh, now let's check Robin and Krom's supports. Uh, they still only have a C-rank support, and I I couldn't do Paralog 4 yet since I didn't have a rescue to save Anna, who I wanted to recruit because she's pretty strong. So my only other option left was to do skirmishes, but right now I had reached a point in the game where you just kind of can't do them because the enemies have just insane stats. I still tried all the available maps and failed because there were just too many enemies that Robin couldn't kill. So I took a break, came back the next day, and a new skirmish spawned. It was just some low res axe users and entombed the perfect matchup for Robin, so I started the map and chose to not pair up Robin and Krom to increase the chance that the Entombed would hit her, dropping her into vantage range, allowing her to cleanly sweep every unit on the map, finally allowing them to reach a B rank support, just enough for them to marry each other if I used a Seed of Trust and they stay paired up on the next map. So after promoting Robin, I could actually start Chapter 11, the fight against Gangriel. You better get used to this sick new strategy that I pretty much am going to use from every map onwards of move Robin in and like just watch her kill everyone. Like the rest of my team is barely doing anything. I tried to give a kill or two to Noe but it was clear how outclassed she was compared to Robin who just moved in and killed everyone. The only counter to this strat is if the enemy had Aegis. And even if they had that, Rowan had really good defenses, so like you needed both that and Luna or Counter to really be a problem. Yeah, and guess what skills Gangro had? Aegis and Luna. So he could actually kill Robin here, but because Fire Emblem Awakening is the easiest game ever made, Robin simply dodged. Outside of the three reinforcements coming in from the left, this map was just a Robin solo, and she unfortunately killed the enemies too quickly, and I couldn't open the final chest that contains a goddess icon. After finding out Prom married Robin, I charged into Chapter 12, another map that Robin could just solo. But I still made the unfortunate mistake of not realizing that the Cavs had passed, so Olivia was going to 
to die. So I placed everyone in this choke point, making it impossible for them to attack her. But now they could just kill Noe, so I've reset and attempted the map again. This time, I didn't dance Robin, and by herself, she destroyed, like, literally everyone. Outside of turn 2, where I had to kill a few units with Noe, Cordelia, and my mages. As I killed the enemies, I'm slowly starting to realize that I should probably stop deploying anyone who isn't Robin. Since then, I literally wouldn't have to think. Which is why after I killed the boss and moved on to the next chapter, I still deployed everyone. I don't know what I was thinking. Also, if you were paying really close attention to the last chapter, you may have noticed that there's a chance that Robin couldn't be crit. As the way I made this mod is I just set the crit of every weapon to 127, which is the highest it would let me do. And since now Robin wasn't getting crit, I had to make some adjustments. At first, I tried making every weapon decrease lock by like 10 points, which doesn't do anything apparently in this game. So I just removed the crit avoid bonus from pair up, and for now that was enough to guarantee she would be crit. Anyway, so this map is slightly more noteworthy than the last two maps as there are longbow archers, which can attack outside of Robin's attack range, so she can't kill them with vantage. They don't actually damage her, but like, if they had Luna, they might do a little damage. So Robin could pretty much just thoughtlessly run up the right side of the map, while the rest of my team just tried to scrounge up as much EXP as possible. Once Robin reached the boss, the map was over. After Crom survived an attack that I think is meant to kill him in the story, we recruited Lucina, who thanks to my side quest to make Robin her mother, has inherited vantage. And since Robin was her mother, I could use a second seal to turn her into a dark mage. So she was now like Robin, just with like minus 20 in like all of her stats. So she needed to gain some levels to at least get promoted, and Paralog 4 seemed the perfect place to gain some EXP, I thought. But Lucina's actually pretty bad, like she can't one-shot these mages, and her mediocre defense makes it hard to safely drop her into vantage range, making her bad for now. But if I fed her a few kills, she should eventually become good, right? So after rescuing Anna, I pretty much had Robin solo basically everything in the north, while Lucina tried her best to pick up some EXP. The only problem I had was at the very end, as it was really difficult to engage the final enemy squad, since the boss had Luna Plus to one-shot Robin who wasn't in vantage range, but guess who was in vantage range? Lucina! who I positioned behind this wall to kill this mage and then the boss, securing us an easy victory on the next turn. You remember when I said I should stop deploying a full team? I actually did that on this chapter, deploying just Lucina, Robin, and their pair up partners. So to start the map off, I used Robin to clear a way to the southern boat, so Lucina could hide there next to the crates, and with Robin standing adjacent to her, she could only be attacked at one range by a single unit, making it just barely possible for Lucina to stay alive and enter vantage range. Range. And when the time was right, I transferred over Farcha to increase her magic and equipped L Thunder for its high might. She now proceeded to kill like 10 guys and gain more than enough EXP to promote. I now expected the rest of the map to be a simple Robin solo, but I made the fatal error of overestimating Lucina, and I ended up getting her killed to this general, making me reset, and it turns out that I needed pretty good Lunatic Plus skill RNG to execute this plan, as it took me like half an hour of Lucina constantly dying for me to get enough a run going again. By simply just being careful this time, the general didn't kill me, allowing Robin to reach and then kill the boss. Chapter 15 is a map where Sairi dies on literally turn 1, and other than that, the map is pretty unnoteworthy, there's no reinforcements, none of the enemies are strong, Robin just killed everyone in the north, and Lucina tried to kill everyone on the beach. I also deployed Farcha because I wanted her to reach level 10, so I could second seal her into a sniper to pair up with Robin, who eventually have a 100% chance to activate Vengeance granting Robin the firepower to break through foes with Aegis. Anyway, it turns out Lucina wasn't strong enough to solo everyone on the beach, so she retreated, and Robin helped her out, and also I reclassed her to Darkflyer to pick up Gale Force. After visiting all the villages, I decimated the boss and moved on to chapter 16. A relatively easy chapter, Robin just sprinted up the left side while Lucina tried her best to gain some XP. On Robin's journey, I began to realize that reclassing to Darkfire may have actually been a really bad idea, as the bow users could just one-shot her making it actually pretty hard to enter vantage range. Fortunately, since Robin was a flyer, she could just avoid the bow users for this map at least, subsequently allowing her to defeat the boss. 
Next up was chapter 17. This one I actually found to be pretty tough. The main problem here is really just the large amount of longbow users. They just kind of stop Robin from doing much. Like here, Robin just can't move forward or she just dies. So after like 20 minutes of resets, I figured out that if I was lucky enough, Lucina paired with Harja could be dropped into vantage range by this guy and subsequently sweep the entire group with vantage. With a path forward cleared, Robin pushed up past Lucina and entered combat until she was dropped into vantage range range, allowing her to play more aggressively and fight the sniper over here. This ultimately resulted in the Valkyries moving south and one of them had the deadly Aegis and Luna combo, so they would survive a crit from Robin and then kill her. But they wouldn't survive if Robin procced a Vengeance at an 80% chance of activating or a Dual Strike at an 84% chance of occurring, so I was pretty sure they'd die on enemy phase. After she survived enemy phase, I just retreated with her to not get jump scared by reinforcements that might just have Aegis encounter. Fortunately, they didn't have that combo, so Robin easily dispatched the three nearby foes. And Lucina retreated to let Robin finish off the others coming in from the right. Then after looting some of the chests, Robin one-shot Pharos, ending the surprisingly tough chapter. And I'll tell you what wasn't a tough chapter, chapter 18, which is so easy that I literally didn't realize I wasn't recording it until I beat it. But fortunately, on my second try, it's so easy that it literally only took me five minutes to just solo everything with Robin once she entered vantage range by damaging herself on the hazard tile. In vantage range, I just move her forward, she kills everything, and I defeat Yenfei without thinking. Chapter 19 marks the part where I just completely stopped caring really. I just reset until Robin didn't die on like turn 1, which took me like 10 minutes to do. With her in vantage range, she just gathered EXP while she slowly advanced towards Walmart. That she one rounded, ending another mostly faultless map. For chapter 20, I reset until this general had vantage plus, so Robin could get into vantage range, and on enemy phase, Lucina also managed to enter vantage range. They both now pushed up the left side of the map with relative ease, as Robin paired up with Barger to have enough magic that she could one-shot enemies with Aegis now. And with Vengeance and Krom's dual strikes, Lucina also had a pretty high chance to kill the enemies with Aegis. After taking out a horde of opponents, Robin finally learned Gale Force. So not only could I now reclass her to remove her bow weakness, and she had an even stronger player phase, which she used to push north. And I now realized that Robin couldn't one-shot Warheart, so she had to survive a counterattack. So I just had to pick up an elixir to heal her to full. Then I used Gale Force to move in range to attack him twice, resulting in his demise. Now that Robin had Gale Force, I decided to attempt the Morgan Paralog. You were intended to do this map like 5 chapters ago, so the enemies are pretty bad. On turn 1, I just recruited Morgan and pretty much just abused Gale Force to beat him some easy kills. When I got bored, I moved Robin up and she killed almost everyone, and shortly after, the boss. So I now journeyed over to chapter 21. This map is noteworthy for featuring a lot of 3 to 10 range Maya mages that can have Luna and can just kill Robin. So I outfitted her with a Void plus 10 and Tone Breaker to try to avoid these attacks, and I reclassed a Sage to pick up Tome Fair later on. This chapter played out that I got Robin in vantage range, moved her up, and forgot that the Maya Mages could also have Fulkai, and they just killed her. On attempt 2, I paid more attention to what skills the Maya Mages had after I dropped Robin into vantage range. With Gale Force to speed her up, she didn't really have to survive that long, and by like turn 4, she reached the boss and defeated them. I now realize that Lucina is pretty bad, so I don't want to use her anymore, so I gave all of my stat boosters to Robin and reclassed Chrom to Archer. This allowed Robin to reach 49 skill with a skill tonic, and after she levels skill one more time, 50 skill for a 100% chance to activate Vengeance, which will now consistently increase Robin's damage by like 20 to 42, which is really, really strong. Anyway, this map is a defeat boss map that I beat on turn 2 by gale forcing off this guy and then killing a versa. On chapter 23, I tried to forge an Arc Thunder, only to realize that by forging it, its crit was reduced to 50, oh, no. making it almost useless. As for the chapter, I one-shot Valadar with Robin, then I set her up to enter vantage range by placing her in range of this general. She now one-shots pretty much everyone, so I basically moved her around and decimated everything. I got slightly scared at the end of the chapter because Valadar has both Vengeance, Vantage, and Dragon Skin, so I couldn't one-shot him. 
and when he was low, he could one-shot Robin from full HP if I was unlucky. Fortunately, he also has Renewal, so he just healed back to full. And with a double with the High Might Magic Bogonon, he died. For Chapter 24, Awakening. This Paladin drops Robin into Vantage Range, and believe it or not, she just kills everyone. Allowing me to move on to Chapter 25, a Defeat Boss Chapter. I immediately try to get Robin into Vantage Range from an attack from a General. But a Maya Mage sniped Robin, dropping her in range to just die. So on attempt 2, this time, Krom didn't dual guard the Swordmaster, setting Robin up to solo the rest of the map. The Maya Mages tried their best to kill her, but their efforts were ineffective. She then killed Aversa, and we moved on to the final chapter. On this map, I finally decided to deploy a unit that isn't Robin, with Olivia to dance Robin and Cordelia to increase Olivia's move. For turn 1, Robin tries to lower her HP to make Vengeance more effective with this general, but Krom just dual guards, so I have to run away and wait a turn before I engaged Grima. I now analyze the enemies that just moved in, and a Swordmaster that had Advantage Plus was Robin's best choice to drop to low HP. At low HP, I just assumed that Robin would probably one-shot Grima, and she didn't. I was 12 damage off. Okay, on attempt 2, I dropped her to even lower HP and paired her up with Lucina, who boosted her magic by like 7 points. So this time, I obviously didn't want your Grimer again. I now realize that I just needed a stronger weapon, so I reclassed Robin to Sorcerer and equipped Goetia for more damage. After dropping her to 1 HP to maximize Vengeance damage, she attacked Grimer, finally one-shotting them, ending this challenge. This challenge was pretty much exactly what I expected. To me, it made the early game much more interesting as I felt a lot more units could contribute compared to normal. Obviously, it eventually devolved into a simple Robin solo, which is kind of of an inevitability for this game. Anyway, like the video if you like the video and tell me in the comments if you want to see me try this challenge for a different Fire Emblem game. Okay, bye.